And it's becoming so more evident that the, that the world was once black that when, when P.E. said fear of a black planet, I said, that's it, right there. <laughs> that's the psychosis. So what I'm saying to you, beloved brothers and sisters, is get your mind out of the fact that there's something sitting up in the sky and that that thing is looking down for everything that you do and punishing you, rewarding you, doing all this to say, okay, you can come, no, you can't, no. that's bullshit. It's all one thing. And as that retraction becomes more sophisticated, retracts, the condensation process becomes the infinite potential that you participate in called life. The subway has to translate into being the book of formation and to decipher its meaning, we must understand the tree of life. The tree is a symbolic reference to the angles taken by the mind energies of universal intelligence. The ancestors stated that the mind of God is viewed through the lens of third density in ten spheres of intelligence as light. Ten spheres of intelligence as light, which when drawn two-dimensionally is seen as the schematics of a tree bearing ten spheres of intelligence as its fruit. This tree is bearing ten spheres of intelligence as its fruit. Now I'm asking you to work with your, your right brain because we're going to go into the left brain. These ten spheres of intelligence have encoded with them the geometric templates and mathematical properties and formulas to create the forms of third density life forms through the manipulation of light by way of sound. It also reveals the angles taken by thought and the secrets to their manifestation, manipulation, and suppression. To become proficient in the use of this language, we must over and understand that all is mind and that mind and movement become sound, light, geometry, and number. Let me say that again. All is mind. And mind in movement becomes sound, light, geometry, and number. So the universal mind in movement becomes sound, light, geometry, and number. Life on the material realm is an organic crystallization of these factors. It is an interlacing tapestry of etheric fibers of atomic origin consolidated by the above mentioned phenomena. Of the dynamics of number, the value and property called four is seen as the foundational resonant template for the construction of the rudimentary activities, with the numbers three, six, eight, and twelve acting as the interlacing values and properties delineating the third density envelope of individual perception. Thus six, the number of the cube, and four, the foundation upon which it is built, equals to ten. The ten spheres of intelligence as sound and light, known as Kabbalah, and the spherical ten principles come together. Why is four the foundational number? Because as I will show you here very quickly, the number four is the foundation to everything. Why is that? The number four is the doorway to understanding the ten sephiroth. Why is that? Because one plus two plus three plus four equals ten. Four is the foundation. That's it. When it comes to the material world, it stops right there at that number. It is there that the root, that, that consciousness takes root into the material world. When all of the light and sound vectors begin to interlace and form the quality of the vibration known as four. Four is not a number. It is a consciousness. Numbers, as you know it, does not exist in the abstract as you see it. You use it for counting separate things. But when the Illuminati use it, they use it as they are principal dynamics of thought. These are living entities. Numbers from one to nine are alive. They're alive as properties of life within you. Everything in your body, everything in your mind is coded around a number. And that number from one to nine is where you are trapped at this particular time. You're trapped someplace in between one and two. Some of you elevate to three. Some may cross over into four, but none of us have ever crossed over into eight and nine and ten yet because we're still locked down in certain numericals that keep us in a threshold. Now very quickly, since I don't have much time before the break, 
I'm going to go over what it is that I'm going to put into your mindset, and the next time I come back, I will elaborate fully. Please go to the next slide. We spoke of this, first chapter, 12 paragraphs. Next. Yeah, go twice when you get it. The first 17 chapters, we will have to talk about it another time. Next. Notice that the book of formation is not just about what is written in the text, listen carefully, but how the text is constructed and where key points appear in the body of the work. I was going to teach you that, but you know, this is, I told you, it was going to be a 10 hour lecture, but I'm just going to give it to you within the last three. The master teacher begins to formally admonish his student about the importance of the numeral 10 in, four, in the fourth paragraph of the first chapter. Wait a minute now. He tells you about the number 10 that I spoke about in the fourth paragraph of the first chapter. <coughs> this is how the book is written in these codes that you need to decipher. Why is this important? Next. Remember the focus of the teacher is on the fundamental expression of material consciousness as calibrated to the number 10. Thus, chapter 1, paragraph 4, represents the sum total of the numbers 1 through 4, which equals 10. The numbers 1 and 4 represent the elemental progression of sound and light consolidating into the foundational templates of third density light. Next. The number 1 is called you, Yod. The number 2 is called He. The number 3 is called Wa, or Va. And the number 4 is called He, which is what you know as yud he wa he that is not Jewish. Next. Y is the Atzalith, Atzaloth, the abode of emanation. H is Briah, the abode of creation. W is Yisara, what we were speaking about, the abode of formation. H is Ashaya, where you have in the Bible? Isaiah, Isaiah the abode of action. Next. Here you have in the template form everything that each one of the four worlds represents. And I'll leave it for you to look over and we will go over this at another time. It's there on the tape. Next. When you look at the yud he wav he, you're dealing with fire and sight, air and hearing, water and taste, earth and smell. So each one of these are formulas based upon the four elements and the four senses. Your senses are the elemental sentinels. In other words, the elements are conscious as themselves. When they come together in your body, they become conscious of themselves because of the spark of life that you represent. You are now tabulating and, and, and calibrating your world based upon the consciousness of these senses. So they can actually get to you by orchestrating your senses. By messing with your senses, they can lock down your consciousness. Yes. The number 10 represents the 10 Sephiroth, which is known in the arcane sciences as the tree of life. It is not this tree of life, though it was represented by our Olmec ancestors, our Timur and Khan ancestors, as such. Next. Also, as by the Aztec ancestors, or Mayan ancestors, as well as Olmec ancestors, as such. You see it here. Next. But when we talk about the tree of life, this is what we are speaking about. This is a template I want you to become familiar with because I want you to know this and there's a good brother, my good brother, Brother Rashid, <clears throat> who will be teaching on this and is teaching very well on this. I wanted to give you this as a template for you to understand what it's about. You are watching the emanations from what we look at as Ketha, Chakma, Bina. Now, these are the first three of the emanations of the all once it contracts upon itself. I'm going to give you that at another time. Burn this particular template and the angles, all, all of them. There is nothing here that's superficial. Nothing on this particular template is superficial. Every angle has a meaning. Every one. Now notice, you see these angles, right? It's everything that has everything to do with anything in the physical form. <laughs> These are what they call Ketha, Chakma, Bina. This does not exist on all of what you see. If you were to go back to the first template, you would not have seen that, where they got Darth Vader from. Hesed. 
Good brother. Tip brother. Nessa. Who? Yasud. Malkut. These names are not names. They're formulas of light and sound. Formulas of consciousness. Next. Each one of them means something. Keta means the source. Chakra means wisdom. Baina means understanding. Shesed means mercy. Gura means power. Tiparat means beauty. Nessa means Nessa means victory. Paul means glory. Yasud means foundation. Malkuth means the kingdom. Look where they put the kingdom. Look very carefully at what I've just showed you. Check the schematics and we're going to catch up with that in a minute. Go right ahead. The first tree of the ten Sephiroth means ten. Each one of the Sephiroth are harmonically am amplified by nine. There is no ten. Ten is actually a duplication of the one on the physical realm. So, whenever you are speaking about the exponential progression of life into the crystallization, the crystalline properties of movement and form, you are looking at it by exponential levels of nine. So, the first tree is ten Sephiroth. But harmonically uh, exacerbated by 9, the second tree becomes 19. But then it becomes 19, and then becomes 20. Again, the third one goes by another 19, it goes to 28. It goes to 37. It goes to 46. It goes to 55. It keeps going back to what? Yes, because there is no other number past that. Everything exponentially is represented by the harmonic outgrowth of that one root seed. Go. Now listen, in the sixth tree you see equivalent of 55. Not only does this number add up to 10, but when the numbers 1 through 10 are added together, they total 55. So thus you can't go farther than that. Next. This is the exponential progression of the Sephirothic tree. What does it look like? It looks like the macrocosmic snowflake. So everything that you could study that has a geometric form to it, from the blood cell all the way out to the snowflake, all the way out to planets, all the way out to gods, all of them have their root in this symbolism. <coughs> Next. The 22 Aleph, Aleph Beta of the Tephiroth. Next. Listen carefully. Look well at these symbols. Do not think they're Jewish. Get away from the Jewish bullshit. <laughs> they are not Jewish. <laughs> this is the Aburu. <coughs> this is the language that the ancient Kemetic priests, when they were being chased out by the Hyksos, they began to quickly say, what do we do with all this knowledge? In their supreme brilliance, they put everything in accordance with coded language that you have to elevate in consciousness to come to the understanding of. So until this devil came to a point where he could understand what the hell was going on, he was not going to unlock the code. But it passed on down. He was trained in the inner temples and it leaked out. And that's why we in the shit we into today. Because we gave it to an immature motherfucker. So now, when you start seeing these, all these are phosgene patterns taken by the brain in higher thought patterns. And they have become a language. They're not only the phosgene imprints of thought patterns, next. They're also the star configurations around your head. Look, this is the astral alphabet. This is the constellations that it's a, akin to. Here you have the specific constellation that they are connected to. And here you have the Hebrew alphabet. Wow. <laughs> Notice, brothers and sisters, that the language of life and the Hebrew alphabet, you're looking at flames. If you were to take a candle and light a match, and watch a flame dance back and forth, you are watching the language of fire speak to you. Well, all light, all language is based on light. And what's the best evidence or physical evidence of light? Fire. So fire 
is essentially these are the kumadu or the fire language that our ancestors created in order to encode the millions of years of information that they had. They had to make it in coordination with your own mind, your own brain work patterns. Next. So what are we looking at? We are looking at the Sephiroth as the audio spectral geometric template of universal existence. Next. And they repeat in a cycle and exist in 300 and, and 231 gates and it comes to pass that all that is formed and all that is spoken emanates from a single name, the Sefer Yesera. This is what they hid from you. This is what they hide from Christians when they say in the beginning was the word. You think some, some jackass named John said that. John didn't ever exist. John is a formula. John is a formula because there was no J's back then. It's I-O-N, which is an ion, so it was the atom speaking to you, fools! <laughs> Next. Here is the three, 231 gates by which light code transmissions take into manifestation. From this particular wheel that you see, these encoded scriptures right here, there are 231 gates connecting everything to the center. The center emanates outward and then emanates back to itself through your thinking patterns. Yes. Next. The four cycles of the three, 231 gates, the first cycle is absolute emanation. 182 gates of creation, 50 gates of understanding. The second cycle, briar or creation, the 238 gates of, 31 gates of creation. The third cycle, yet sir, formation, the 231 gates of initiation. This is why I started here. <coughs> so you can understand the world of form before I even get to beginning the world of creation and emanation. Before you can even understand that, the fourth cycle, which is what you all are coming from, is based upon redemption, the 50 gates of understanding and ascension, the 182 gates of Asiatic redemption. This is what we're doing in the last 20, 25 years. I was dealing with this level. Now I'm here. But I'm hoping that I'm around long enough to get you here and there. Next, very quickly. Here you have a schematic showing you the different patterns that light takes. Everything is a schematic of light and sound. And the angles of creation are right there in front of you. Patterns where you can definitely form things out of nothing. Because everything that you want to exist already exists. You have to form the template by your mind. And when your mind forms the template, the sound begins to fill out the template. And when you understand how your thought process and everything else works, you will begin to understand that everything, everything is based upon these schematics. Next. All together, you see, and I'm just giving you abbreviations, you are watching the different patterns taken, all these being light code sounds, all these being the vectors and the ways that the sound takes to connect together with these properties to bring about the kingdom. Next. Again, you are looking at the macrocosmic snowflake. Next. We deal with the Ain Sof. Ain, take out the eye, what do you have? Where do you see those two letters? Anu and Amen. You have to remember they take away and they shift stuff around. The A doesn't exist. You can't even think about it. The A saw is the first creation. This is the creation that you see. Or even before you see anything, this is the one that gives you the property of the triad. Next. You're looking at the expression. What you're looking at is the condensation process that I was telling you about. From out of nothing, you are watching, don't look at it from the top down. You look at it from the condensation as the aim begins to retract upon itself. 
And as the aim retracts upon itself, you get Ketha, the crown. Next. This particular, these three pillars represent the three aspects of the higher properties of Ketha, Chokma, and Maya. These are above everything that we see created. This is the triple head or the triple God head that they talk about. The three spaces of God, the three faces of God that exist before existence. So when you see these three properties, know that they are seen as three different pillars. And each pillar represents the male force, this one here, this on the other side represents the female force, and this is the neutral balance of consciousness in between the two that harmonizes the properties of both. Next. Notice that they have this on the Catholic symbols. Look at it. What's that? Who else? And what is this? Don't tell me Valentine did. <laughs> you are watching one of the most sacred symbols called the, called the Visica Pisces. Go on, real quick. Push ahead of time. This is one of those lectures. I'd love to give it to you. This is what we talk about, malice and mercy. This is masculine, this is feminine. So when we talk about judgment, we talk about the feminine, which is why they got a woman with the blindfold. And here you have the neutral balance or mildness connecting the two sides, consciousness. The order of condensation from Ketha to Chakma, which is wisdom, to understanding, to mercy. Notice something is missing. Right here to mercy, yeah. over here, dot, remember it's missing. They don't ever put it on the original one that they show you. Why not? We'll talk. Here we go, down, this way, here, and then down into the kingdom. Next. This is all elementary. Now we put in the dot, but know the rule. We cannot put the dot in at the same time we have Ketha. <clears throat> this is the hidden part of Ketha. This is knowledge. And this is what they are keeping you from. Go. Notice we broke down the four worlds. Dark runs between these two worlds. Notice that Absolute, Raya, Yesara, and Ashaya all have the kingdom. But have you noticed something about this kingdom? As opposed to this kingdom, this kingdom, and this kingdom. Quickly. Malkuth is the only one on the side. Say it again. Malkuth is the only one on the side. Yes. Malkuth is the only one there. Why? Because it's It comes back to the one. But see, there's something that get you. Notice. Hit it again. No, go back. Go back one. Let me just do this for you quickly. I know that you want to get your break, and I'm going to get you here. Don't, we'll get you back. Sorry, Can you go back one? Okay. Notice. Remember we said there were the pillars, right? Remember now we had Shes Sheset and Gibara, Gibura is the mother and father of Tibara. <coughs> Nezach and Hod is the mother and father of Yesod. Chokma and Baina are the mother and father of God. What? Who is the mother and father of Maku? Really? Uh huh. Okay, now I've delineated it for you. Look. Have you noticed anything about? what I was trying to show you. Keep going. Hit it. Where would you find the mother and father of Malkuth? Well, you're going to have to go up on the Nile around the kingdom of Abydos. Next. And on the temple wall on the temple of Issa. Next. You will find this symbol. The flower of life that this guy named Dronvalo Melchizedek is living. That was sitting in the temple of Abydos. Your ancestors drew it. They put it there for a reason. Why? 
because it was another part of the key to let you understand and understand exactly what the Malkuth kingdom was about. Next. Even your boy, Leonardo da Vinci, who studied comedic sciences, knew what it was. Next. Here it is. The flower of life. The flower of life essentially is a series of circles interlacing to create specific symbols through which life and the forces of light and sound become manifested reality. Next, upon this template, you will find the mother and father of here they are. But they never get displayed. Why? Because once you understand, because remember, the kingdom is where you are right now. See, if you don't know who the mother and father of the kingdom are, your ass is a slave. You are maintained. You are locked down. You don't know who your parents are. I'm not just talking about your biological parents. I'm talking about the parental parts of your spirit and your soul. Your spirit and your soul is gone. See, when you get initiated, when you get initiated and you've been initiated, they put you where? They put you in the northeastern section. Ooh. Oh, how many Masons in the house? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about. They put you directly into the northeastern gate to sit down. That's because now you're initiated in. We can tell you where you were and why it is we've been keeping that part secret. So now, what's supposed to be looking correctly is this is what's been missing. The hidden societies know what the mother-father principle to your kingdom is, which means they know the secret of manifestation and formation. In other words, because you no longer speak the language of light, you no longer control your own destiny. They control you by manipulating the light and sound systems through your television, through everything you do, your TV, your computer. Everything is the use of these energies to create the Malkuth kingdom that they now rule. Next. <laughs> So the real schematic is supposed to look, essentially, this is the seed of life. The seed of life we'll go into a little later on, another time. Next. That is called the Visica Pieces. The Visica Pieces is when two cycles, circles come together and they create what? What does this look like? MasterCard. MasterCard. <laughs> <laughs> My God, brother, don't you have a woman? <laughs> Haven't you, um, have you ever gone down and worshipped? <laughs> Given homage? <laughs> this is the cosmic yoni. This is through which all things are manifest on the physical realm. Go forward. Notice that in this particular yoni, even the behind is here. Even the anus is here. <laughs> this is the cosmic pussy that we've been talking about for the longest period of time. Remember I told you about it? Y'all thought I was crazy? <laughs> there it is. The Vesica Pieces right here. Next. And look what happens upon it. Around that big yoni vagina up in the sky, everything is manifested. This particular pattern is the pattern of manifestation. It is through the cosmic yoni that the sounds and the sights, that's why your mother sings you an alibi. That's why talking to you while you're in the womb forms you. Because you are inside of the sephiroth when you are there. You are now forming parts of your brain. Parts of your working spirit, parts of your, your dialect, everything is being formed at this particular time. Next. So now we see that the visica pieces or the visica pussy is here where the Christians been using it. They got Christ inside of it and even decorated the butthole this way. <laughs>
So sisters, you got to know why they target you. You, you are the one through which we use your mitochondria to come back into the earth. If they fuck with you, they fuck with us. All of us, collectively. They take us out. So they hide who they are inside of all these little paintings, not you realizing that this cross here has to do with the fixed signs of the zodiac. And here they are again when you deal about the Sphinx itself, when they start talking about the four directions, and this being Leo, Taurus, Aquarius. No, this is Aquarius. Scorpio. Scorpio. Hmm? Next. Know that we are dealing with again the kingdom. Here we go again. We just showed you this. Now here it is crossing over. As you condense through Doth, you come into this kingdom of Briya. As you condense through Briya into Yetzirah, you condense through Yetzirah by way of Yasud and Tifad and Doth, you come down into the kingdom. Next. So what happens? We are looking at again the cosmic vagina. We are watching. There is a condensation process going further down. But what have we done? We have added the mother and the father. So now we have 12. Actually, we have 13. But the 13th now is above us. And there you have part of the, 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 uh, the what I was telling you about, the, the, the decoding or the cipher of the 13th survivor. The cipher of the 13th survivor is they took away the mother and the father of Malkuth. Therefore, they now know what to do to control the kingdom. Since you don't know that there are 12 Sephiroth and not 10, and that you're operating on only one side of your brain, they can fuck with your world because you don't know who the mama and the daddy is. You the mama and the daddy. You were removed from the tree of life. You the outcast. You the stone that was uh, discarded. Next. So why when we start putting the tree back together, we're putting together what? The first cube, the second cube, and the third cube. Notice that we are in lockdown on the third cube. And why I said that we need to transcend the third cube of metaphoric space-time reality. Next. Understand too that these cubes now with all 13 together, you see the top cube here, you see the second cube here, and you see the third cube. Here is where we lay trapped. Because this cube is based on perceptual references of metaphoric reality. What are those metaphoric realities? The psycho-spiritual cube of space. Next. I'll read you. The cube of space is actually a multidimensional model of psychological space and an integrated framework for the metaphors of embodied experience. Next. In other words, the cube is a contract, a, a construct of residual thought energies based on past experiences that were framed by the syntax used to fix and categorize the metaphors of language into the threshold parameters of three space perceptual reality. Next. It you know, sounds crazy, but keep on going real quick. We're going to get past all of this. Oh, okay. The syntax is the way in which words are put together to form phrases and sentences. Next. The definition of a metaphor, a figure of speech, listen, in which a term is transferred from the object it ordinarily designates to an object it designates only by implicit comparison. In other words, you are now comparing reality to the bullshit they give you to, re uh, to compare to based on the language that you define the reality with. Your language is your lockdown. The way you form the syntax and create the metaphors that you speak of your reality keeps you in lockdown. So when I begin to teach you how to get out of the framework of a lockdown, that's when I become dangerous. And that's when you become dangerous because now you're talking to your peoples. All about this becomes now just regular street talk. And now everything changes in the dynamics of the reality. Real quick. Examples of psychosensual spatial syntax and metaphor used to construct this tube of space. We are gathered here today to share in the light of reason, bittersweet memories, the sweet smell of success. These words are music to my ears, the velvet voice of Luther Vandross, a bright idea, love stinks, ending on a sour note, the world is watching. What are we looking at? 
We are looking at the way you frame reality through the central, the sensual matrix of your four senses. So you now are speaking in terms of casting the original meaning onto other shit that does not even have a meaning, but you are creating a language and a syntax and a meaning based upon how you transfer that word. And that's how they fuck with your reality. They keep shifting the context by which you say this means this and that means that. Next. Thus we see that through the manipulation of syntax and metaphors to construct the perceptual envelopes of our individual realities, the Illuminati orchestrates the subconscious imprints of sense-based memories to cause us to construct a cube of metaphoric space that distorts and deflects the incoming life codes of third density redemption. Go ahead. The directions taken by each sense to build out the cube are psychospatial and based on the elemental use, you, the elemental used as the center or sphere of emotion-based consciousness, which leave their imprints on our neurological circuitry, our cognitive processing, our symbolic thoughts, and expression of our experiences. Next. Here are some words molded into syntax to give evidence of our psychospatial time-based orientation and the symbolic directions that construct and reinforce our light code lockdown very quickly. Obey your superiors. Stand on your right. Black pride. You, my nigga. Center yourself. Face your uncertainties. Sinister implications. Black reparations. Black pride. Watch. You've got your whole life in front of you. Put the past behind you. Back in the old days. Sailing into uncertain waters. The object of my affection, the quiet voice inside, having lofty ideals. Now, I'm using these only as quick examples so that you understand that your language is constructing the lockdown. Go. Here you have these three pillars as we spoke before. Next. Now we see how these three pillars become the context by which we form the cube of your reality. And this is where I will wrap up. Quickly. The cube now is constructed very quickly of three space. The three Sephirothic pillars now become one, two, three dimensional areas of space. <laughs> Understand that the three pillars of the Sephiroth essentially are telling you right now, I've told you they were two dimensional, as a two dimensional schematic of a ten dimensional reality. The ten dimensional reality begins on the pattern of three, which represents the three pillars. Next. Now you see that the three pillars now become the invested in structure of what becomes the lockdown code for the cube. From experience, life, from existence first. The first line is existence. The second line is life. The third line is experience. And each one has a sigil or a fire sigil that rules that one, the four of them meaning the four elementals, or the four elements of fire, air, water, and earth. Next. Notice that we see that all that comes in with existence is pre-conscious. All that comes in with life is un unconscious, and then you see all that comes to the reality that we are here sharing and existing is an outgrowth of what is unconscious to what you see as conscious. So here's how we are working out the cube. Go ahead. The cube now, as we follow along on the spaces that we have written out, this three space, the three space now creates realities in conjunction with the direction that the lines are taking. And now through syntax, through our perception, we are filling out the cube, the individual cube of space. Next. Now we notice that in existence, we have one parameter of the ceiling and the floor to our cube. Next. Along the path, we see here another set to the cube, each one being a polarity as we spoke of, of the other. Next. The next polarity is, we see the two sides, the outer sides. Next. Now, when we see all these three, the, the pillars of mercy and so forth, come together to fill the, the, the Sephirothic uh, timetable for existence, next. 
we watch all of them come together at one time. And what we see is along this line, we see past and future. Along this line, we see sensation and perception. Along this line, we see the self, who we are, and that part of us that we wish to reach all the way up there that we don't know too much about, we call the other. Inside of this whole experiential reality becomes the cube that you, as the center, reference. These now become your perceptual thresholds. And it is these perceptual thresholds that they manipulate and keep you locked down in that box, in that cube. Again, we see that there is indeterminate, each one of these, and I'm putting them as a template for you to read because we'll be coming back to it next. Again, you see the container also being added into union, movement, formation, cosmic consciousness, existence, unconscious, unconditioned, physical supports, resistance, indeterminate, container life. Keep going. I would explain everything. Now you see how the cube used with the sigils that I spoke to you about. Each one of these sigils become the borders of your reality. They use the Hebrew, what they call Hebrew, what I call the Kumadu, as threshold components to your consciousness matrix. They can set up this vibratory load. Know that inside of your computer, there are sigils set up in the form of circuits that vibrate these very tonal signals. The television, the new cube televisions, the one that have all the bright pictures. They're all lockdown frequencies that are coming off of this. And all you are doing, you can't turn off the television. I come, I, sometimes I look at this shit and I say, why can't I get up and go turn it down? <laughs> because they use these sigils and signals as ways to lock down your consciousness matrix. Keep going. And why am I saying this? Keep going. It's a hijacking the comedic renaissance, fear of a black extraterrestrial. Go ahead. Here are the pyramid fault lines we spoke about. All of them, patterns, all along here. And look, at the, look along the Upper Tan Peninsula, and look along here. Keep going. The reason why I want you to see this is because the pyramids of Saqqara are lying to the star system and drama. Yeah. Are you ready for your people? Huh? You've been bullshitting with the history of that to mean shit. Your people are free. Your people left you star signals. Your people left you a template to find your way back home. And if you get up off your ass in church and start studying the metaphysics and stop worrying about what this crack is doing, you're always worried about the white man. He worried about you. He worried about you finding this shit out. But he's telling his own people. He's telling his own people right there in this new book. Keep going. I'll tell you about it in a minute. The symbol of Orion is set up directly like the pyramids of Giza. Exactly like the pyramids of Giza. Keep going forward. Look at the Nile River and look at the Milky Way. Look at the Nile River and look at the star systems along the Milky Way and look at where they put the pyramids. And your Christian priest tells you that astrology is wickedness. I just stood up. Here you are along the Nile River. Here you are along the celestial Nile River. Next. Here you are, the configurations of these particular... Yeah, we built the pyramids. So fucking what? Why did we build the pyramids? Why did we build the pyramids? Yeah, we do great things, but why do we do them? Is it for some stupid reason we ain't had nothing to do? Let's just hire a few dumb assholes. Let's put some bricks together. <laughs> Look at Stonehenge. White people really think that they built this shit. White folks are something else. <laughs> it's a star map, but you see what they're doing is they're talking to themselves, but they believe they're talking about themselves. They're not talking about themselves. They're talking to themselves thinking they're talking about themselves. 
Think about that. Next, here's the map of Stonehenge, and people are not really picking up on what Stonehenge is. Stonehenge, Winterbourne, Stoke Marrow Barrows. Next, you see that it is aligned with the Pleiades star system. They left us places for us. They even left a little bit for white people to check out. <laughs> Next. Very quickly, you watch Stonehenge, and now they figured out that Stonehenge essentially. Next. That essentially Stonehenge is exactly what we've been telling you about when it comes to the star system. Next, you'll find out that Stonehenge essentially is the Vitruvian man. Now you know Da Vinci studied our shit. He was persecuted. He said, they cannot, they do not allow me to do the real occult work. So if I hide it in my artwork, and he got all this artwork, no nobody can figure it out. But it's all about your secret sciences hidden inside of the artwork. Next. You see here that in the Sephar, inside of here you will see that these points of light next represent this. Here you have the Vitruvian man. You remember what he looked like? Well, watch the patterns, the angles. The same angles with the hands outstretched and the legs. Next, look who he puts up there. <laughs> Delusions of grandeur. <laughs> he believes that he finds something out, he must put himself in what he discovers. It's the same goddamn thing they did to America. Yep. They discovered America. Now they discovered what Africans have been doing, all they have to do is colonize the shit. You don't want it. You don't want to talk about it. You want to talk about our great history, but you don't want to claim the mystery. So we'll come step the fuck in and take it from you. I'll just put myself in there. <laughs> Look like Tom Cruise, don't it? <laughs> Next. Anybody know what this is? Yeah, it's a pyramid. It's all make Maya, but I'm not going to tell you yet. No, it's not Chichen Itza. No, not Tikal. Next. We get it again. Look at it. This is your ancestors' buildings, huh? Washington D.C. Looks like Washington D.C., doesn't it? Keep going. It is Tehotihuacan. Tehotihuacan? Oh, really? What is a Tehotihuacan? Hit me. <laughs> Tehotihuacan is Tehuti, the city of Tehuti, here in the Americas. Mm. The city of Tehuti. The city of Tehotihuacan. And you think that you was just over there in Africa. The city of Tehotihuacan is aligned up to the clusters of the Pleiades and the Orion Belt. But it's so deep because if you were to see the Pleiades and look at this symbol of Jehudi, hit me, you would see that. Wow. Okay, hit me again. Keep that form in mind. Keep that form in mind. They left you. Signs and symbols. Find your way back. Next. A cluster of pyramids that nobody goes to because they look all ruined up. But this cluster is directly related to the pyramids. I mean, to the Pleiades star system. Hit me quick. Here we have at Angkor, 
at the Khmer Empire in Cambodia. Next. Here's the star map Perseus, the same star map Perseus you see in Angkor in Cambodia. Next. And here we are on Mars. Here you have a cluster that they found the Mars. You know they're not telling you everything they found. <laughs> Hit me. Check out what they found on Mars. Check it out. Check it out. Old cities. Check it. Next. We're almost done. Check out again. Another constellation and look what they found on it. Of course, the rock hit like that and it just bounced and that came up. There it is. <laughs> Next, quickly. Check out in Sidonia, Mars. <coughs> Check out the way that these clusters that you saw those pyramids at that I told you was all bunched up, they're in the same order, in the same configuration. And they were that face on Mars. Keep in mind that the face on Mars was also shown late earlier to be either a lion or a black man's face. And that black man's face, the same face on Mars, was the, the same face of a black woman that was in, uh, uh, in uh, Panama when they evaded. And they went to Panama not to kill or to release or to get, what's his name, but to kill this woman. One minute. All right? One minute. Next. One minute on the tape. Yes. All right, here we go in Sidonia. Very quickly, look at the patterns. If you want to shut it off now, real quick, you only have five minutes left. Okay. 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 We want to get this last thing. Okay. All right. All right. Look very carefully at the Sidonia, the face, the cluster of pyramids here, and the DNM pyramid at this particular point. Very quickly. Next. Next. As we see that there are a grid pattern to everything that you see on Mars at this particular time, matching, next, the same grid patterns as you will see here, manifested the same way that the three pyramids, the three gate pyramids in Kemet, in Egypt, Giza. Now you're looking at the face that is on Mars. Now look at that face. Now because we as black people don't want to claim the mysteries and we only want to focus on the histories, white people are coming along and as they did with every damn thing they find, they stick their face on it. That's right. Keep going brother, next. You're watching now as the supposedly the resolution is getting better and closer and closer. Next, this is what this cracker is doing. He is putting his <laughs> He is putting in his face on Aristotle. He's got his Jesus. He's got all of these crackers up there now as the Mars people. This is the new Mars face. So you better hurry up and get to the mystery part of your life and your people and your ancestors because they are beating you to that space. They're trying to get a vicarious type of spirituality by putting themselves in every place that was spiritual to us. Yes. And here we go. Right now, this is the new face on Mars. So this is Zeus. Now here, he do have a little bit of tan now. Next. Here we have a specific symbol that was found on there in a mountainous region. It looks like a pyramid. Next. If you were to look at this particular symbol, you would see what we are about to see, what we saw just a few frames ago. Next. You are watching essentially as the crystallization of this particular pyramid gets more and more. Next. You are watching the Vitruvian man. Next. Coming up here. Next, here. So, the Vitruvian man, again, another symbol left for us to see. But of course, what does he do? Wait, check it. He puts his ass in. <laughs> now, instead of putting his ass in Stonehenge, which he looks like he belongs, this motherfucker puts himself in the middle of the desert, where African peoples are, where there ain't no white people, where there were no white people. What does he do? He puts himself in there. Understand right here. It's called the hidden records. 
In it, he decodes everything that we were supposed to be decoding for ourselves. And he is putting his face on every damn thing. Next. Again, the codex, where he sees himself inside of the pyramids of Kemet. Here it is, the Vitruvian man. Next. Brothers and sisters, as I end, I will tell you this, that if you don't start looking up <clears throat> to find the Merkaba of consciousness within you, you will not know who you really are. And again, the two Sephiroth that are missing will stay missing because it is within you. The two Sephiroth is the black man and the black woman. Because we are here to recreate or to bring back the true kingdom, the kingdom of the spirit. And wasn't that what Yahweh ben Yahweh said he wanted to bring back? The kingdom? The true kingdom? And when they came after him? Well, exactly what it is that is missing inside that Sephiroth of creation and formation, down in the third cube of metaphoric space, it is the cube that you are trapped in. It is the cell. It is the consciousness containment that they keep black people in. Next, I want to let people know that we thank you for all of your kind attention. We couldn't get that up on the screen next. But we also want to let you know, beloved brothers and sisters, here it is. Oh, all right.